In this video, we want to take you around the island of Boracay here in the Philippines, show you some fun things to do, and also give you our honest opinions about what it's like to travel here. But before we do that, just want to quickly introduce ourselves in case you're new to this channel. My name is Steve Yalo. I'm Pema Travels. We're currently traveling around the Philippines, but we travel full time to all different places around the world. And we would love to invite you to subscribe to our channels. We're both full time videographers. We like to share information about what it's like to travel, give some travel advice, some help. Hello. <laughs> and also some entertainment as well. We like to make keep our videos fun and lively and just have a good time and meet locals that's what we love to do we love to meet people as we travel hello. hello are you from here yeah. oh you want to say hi to youtube hi. anyway now it is time to go explore so let's go check out what there is to do here in Baraka island Before we share our opinions of Boracay and take you along on some adventures around the island, I want to quickly review some tips and share some information about this place. First, let's take a look at the map. Here's the Philippines, here's Panay Island, and see this teeny tiny place up here? Yeah, that's Boracay. Before you get to Boracay, you need to first go to Cataclan. Getting from Cataclan to Boracay is super quick and easy. We were actually really impressed with how efficient this is. There are boats constantly transferring people back and forth all day, and you can watch my previous vlog to see that whole process with more tips and insight and all that jazz if you're interested. And don't listen to these guys, there are definitely tricycles available. More a bike, it's only motorbike available. No, more tricycle. No, available, pa. no tricycle available. You! You! Yeah, there's tricycles everywhere, so I think that's just their tactic to make you just go with them. Okay, let's take a closer look at the layout of the island. White Beach is the largest beach and the most popular area on the island. The sand is the softest I think I've ever felt in the world, and maybe even the tastiest. <laughs> it's divided into three areas, and in typical Filipino style, they have really creative names. Station 1, Station 2, and Station 3. In Station 1, you'll find luxury hotels and it's usually a little less crowded on the beach. Station 2 and 3 have beachfront stores, bars, and restaurants, and typically a bit more people walking around. During peak season, this entire beach will get very crowded during sunset since it faces west, but we learned that during the morning and daytime when the sun is nice and bright, there are way fewer people here. The beach is now really beautiful, but last year it faced some major controversy as the entire island was shut down for tourism after the president called it a cesspool. I will close Boracay. Boracay is a cesspool. It's destroying the environment of the Republic of the Philippines. The island was closed for rehabilitation for six months and major improvements have been made, or rather, are still being made. When we first arrived on the island, one of the first things we noticed was the overwhelming amount of construction taking place. This caused traffic in many areas as parts of the street were being blocked and seemingly hazardous conditions all around us. To be honest, our first impressions of Boracay were not so great. Although this is mainly our fault as we failed to realize this was one of the busiest times to visit as it was Chinese New Year. It seemed like the island was filled with tourists. Almost all of the hotels and hostels were fully booked and prices seemed to be a bit higher compared to other parts of the Philippines. We were a little bummed and thought we actually made a mistake by coming here. That is, until we met this wonderful local woman named Rina. So we're walking down the street and someone just recognized us. Woo! Woo! They call me Ronda Girl. Ronda, Ronda Girl? Girl? Yeah, all right. she's, a, she's a travel vlogger herself, so you gotta check it out. What's yeah. her channel? Rina Palmer Boracay. There you go, you can check Yay! it out. She's from here in Boracay. She's Rosa ng Boracay, Ronda Girl. <laughs> so much energy, I love it. Oh my god, she's so freaky. <laughs> so we're experiencing some genuine Filipino hospitality now. She goes, hey, if you want to borrow my motorbike, feel free to take it. So we were actually about to jump on a tricycle, but instead of getting a tricycle, now we can, now we can just take her motorbike. So nice. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> We were so much happier when Rina gave us her scooter and we got to explore more diverse parts of Boracay. All right, we just made it to Mount Lujo Peak. Not quite at the peak yet. We gotta walk up some stairs to get there. How much is it? 240. 240? 
128. Okay. All right, we made it to the top here. This is the highest point here in Barakai, and the view is incredible. You can see the whole island. Right over here is the kite surfing beach we were just at, and on the other side of that is White Beach, where all the tourists are in Barakai. All right, we just drove to a place called Puka Beach. As you can see here, on the side, there's a bunch of shops and stores selling local trinkets, souvenirs, cute little babies. Well, not selling babies, but there's cute babies here. Now we're about to walk on the beach. Let's go see what it looks like. So since this beach is a little bit further removed, it's on the northern tip of the island. North, south, east, west. Yeah, northern tip of the island. I've been told it's a little less crowded, and it definitely is less crowded than the other beaches, like near Station 1, 2, and 3. So that's why we want to come here and check it out. It looks like the beach goes down a little bit, so instead of walking, I think we should see it from the sky. Do you have a license to fly your drone, sir? No? Um, I'm a licensed flyer. I don't have like any uh, So it's not allowed, no? Not allowed? Okay. Never mind. We're not going to fly. Not allowed. Sorry! It's <laughs> a so tip for you. If you have license, ma'am, you can fly your drone here in Burakai, anywhere here in Burakai. But you need, you need to get that one in Action Center. I, you ask there in uh, third floor. I want to get the license for my drone. And then you can get that one also, ma'am. But, but now, ma'am, no license is not allowed. Where? Where do you get the license? Station 1, ma'am. Station 1. Yeah. So you can get a license. Yeah. Okay. Do you have to pay? Ka-up license. Ka-up license? Yeah. Okay. Do you have to pay for it? Yes, sir. How much? I don't know if how much. Okay. Okay, well, that's nice. At least you can get a license to fly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, madam. Well, there you go. So, you're not allowed to fly here. And if you want to, well, technically you are allowed to fly, but you need to get a license near Station 1. So, you can ask around for that. Basically, you have to pay. Basically, yeah. you have to pay. Pretty much, you just got to pay to fly your drone here. Or, what we should have done is just walk down the beach a little bit and flew it there. Because... Can you not encourage illegal activities? Well, usually it's best to not fly your drone when you're around a lot of people anyway. I always suggest go to a more private location. Like, there's the entrance to the beach right there. If only we would have walked maybe a few hundred feet down that way. <laughs> Alright, quick stop at Puka Beach. We can't fly our drone, so we didn't spend much time here. We just wanted to see what it's like. It's very nice, but like I said, the sun is going down soon, so we want to get a good spot for sunset. Let's go check it out. <laughs> All right, so we just drove. Instead of going to Diniweed, I think that's how you pronounce it. D-I-N-I-W-I-D, -I, I think that's it. <laughs> that's actually just over there on the other side of this cliff, which we can walk around. This, where we are right now, is Station 1. And as I explained earlier, the main part of White Beach, which is the main beach here in Boracay for all the tourists, is divided into three stations. And now we're all the way at the most northern part of White Beach, Station 1. So, we've, t we've been told that right around this corner is much fewer people. So that's where we're going to go for sunset. But, it looks like we have, still have about an hour until the sun sets. So maybe we'll walk down here a little bit, explore White Beach. And when the sun is getting a little lower, then we'll walk on the other side of that rock. And see if it's a little bit more private over there. Alright guys, I think now is a perfect time to fly. Shh, don't tell anyone. But here we go, let's fly. Not going to the beach around the corner over there. We just ended up hanging out here, flying the drone, taking some photos, and the sunset is just epic. It is beautiful. I think Boracay has some of the best sunsets in the world. <laughs> it's really nice. That night, we ended up meeting up with Rina and her husband at a bar on the beach in Station 2. Boracay used to be known for the loud music and late night parties on the beach but a lot has changed since the island shut down for rehabilitation. 
Many bars and nightclubs on the beach are required to close much earlier now, but I've noticed a few bars staying open later than the rest, but their music and parties are happening in a contained environment indoors, not directly open air like most of the other bars that are required to close at midnight. The next day, Rena invited us to stay with her and her husband in their beautiful home in the middle of the island. By the way, Rena's husband owns a supermarket on the main road in Station 2 called Crafts of Barakai. If you visit this island, I highly recommend you do your shopping here. They have everything you need and more. Keep an eye out for their coconut oil products. From insect repellent to moisturizing lotion and aloe vera, you'll love these all natural coconut products. Their store is located near a place called Dimal, which is one of the most popular areas to shop and eat. You'll find a variety of restaurants with many food options, but we actually got most excited about the dessert. All right guys, so after dinner, we wanted some dessert. So we came to a very popular place. I think it's very popular because every day here so far, there has been a long line out the door for people waiting to get a taste of some of this halo mango. Actually, this one is just the mango ice cream version. So it's a soft serve mango ice cream with actual pieces of mango in there too. Can you get me a napkin? <laughs> Not only does it taste good, but it feels pretty good too. Alright, we're gonna enjoy this. We'll see you later. So yesterday for dessert we had the halo mango and today we're trying a place called Coco Mama. Coconut ice cream dessert. I think. I don't know, it seems pretty popular. There's been a constant line all day, every day. So we gotta try it. Let's go see what it's like. They do have a mango flavor with some mango pieces, but unfortunately that's not available. But it's okay, because this is still so delicious. Get some ice cream mixed with some actual slices of coconut in there and you got some crunchy things on top very delicious dessert if you're looking to escape the crowds i suggest you explore outside of the white beach area the east side of the island tends to be a bit more windy so kite surfing is very popular and you can take some lessons at bulabag beach as we mentioned earlier, Puka Beach is a bit more chilled and at the very north of the island. Another really nice beach we visited during our last day here is called Ilig Iligan Beach. Most of that beach is private and owned by resorts, but there is a nice section at the northwest part of the island that you can access by the public road. It's a beautiful beach and when we visited in the late morning, there were very few people here. There's still a lot more to discover around Barakai. There are plenty of activities to experience that we actually never did. From parasailing to jet skiing and sailboat tours for sunsets, there are a lot of fun things you can do here. All right, Pema, honest opinions about Barakai, hit me. I have a love-hate relationship with this place. When we first arrived, I hated it. There were too many people here, was not expecting that. But then as soon as we met at the Trina, we had so much fun just getting to explore the rest of the island, having local friends telling us where to go, what to do, that was away from the crowds. And even today, going to the beach was so nice because there weren't that many people, especially with like it being midday heat. The water was amazing. You can see why this place is so popular. There's a reason why so many people come here. Sometimes you look at places and you, you see how popular they are and that could be a negative, but so many people come here because this is such a beautiful island and the water is crystal clear, especially along the really long white beach. The sand is the most soft, fine grained sand. It's so nice. And everyone here is just, all the locals here are just so friendly. So I'll definitely be coming back. I enjoyed it here. Hi, Sam. Oh, thank you so much. Keep in touch. Keep yeah. in touch. Oh, You're the best part of Oratai for us. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Salamat. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this vlog. If you're not already, we would love to invite you to subscribe to both of our channels so you can join us on our adventures as we travel around the world. Go ahead and click that thumb to give us a like if you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you in the next vlog. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications. Yeah, turn on that bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of new videos. You'll be the first one to see it. Until next time, Barakai, we'll see you soon. Peace. Here's what's coming up on the next episode. During our trip to Barakai, we had an incredible experience visiting a local Ati tribe. These are the indigenous people who are native to this area and it was so amazing meeting them and learning about their lifestyle and culture. My next video will be exclusively about our experience with them, so be on the lookout for that coming soon.